How you doing guys? So another video for you and this time I decided to do an interview with my friend Mike. Um, he's going to introduce himself, kind of go over a new company that he just created, a new website, which is his apparel is there and I've already shown you <laughs> his apparel there. Um, and just kind of go over his path in firearms culture, his path, his warrior path that he's on, like all of us are. And we're coming right at you with that in just a minute. Right, Mike, so why don't you introduce yourself to my subscribers? Hey guys, I'm Mike Fiore. I'm the owner and HMFIC, uh, head motherfucker in charge. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do you love cursing on your channel? Oh, fuck yes. All right, fuck yes. Uh, the head motherfucker in charge of Bulletin. We are an online um, event listing platform for trainers and students in the firearms, outdoor, self-defense, and other like-minded training communities. And how long has it been up and running at this point? Uh, at this point, where are we? We're in February of 23, 23 uh, about three weeks as okay. we've, we've been live. Um, started the business last year, uh, came up with the idea, the development plan, worked with developers, designed it, and then we launched uh, first week of, or no, second week of January of 23. Okay. And what, what's your background that kind of drove you to this idea? Well, first of all, what makes you qualified? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing makes me qualified. Um, so uh, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm kind of a unique mix of several things. Um, I'd say there's three things that kind of led to me putting this together. One, I'm a student. First and foremost, always, like, it drives everything I do. I love learning. I love challenging myself. I love um, experiencing new ideas. So that drives all of this. Right. Um being a student, like for a good deal of us, led to me becoming uh, a teacher as well. I learned a bunch of stuff, got really proficient at it, started teaching some radio classes, uh, some firearms training. Um, so I got to see this kind of world that we live in, the training community from both sides. Right. Um, and I saw a problem. I'm like, okay, well, as a student, I find it really hard to find trainers. Uh and as a trainer, I find it really hard to find students. <laughs> hmm. There should be something that helps yes. kind of like, you know, fix that problem. So I, I kind of looked at that. And then I have a 15-year career in advertising. Um, I'm an art director by trade. And uh, so I've got a lot of experience designing websites and all different types of digital materials. And thought, you know, I kept thinking to myself, somebody needs to make this website. And whenever you think that, yeah. you're the person. Yeah. If you're thinking anything like that about anything, guess what? You're the guy. Yeah, eventually I realized that that guy was me. <laughs> so I, uh, I I went for it. And um, I had a lot of great help. Um, close friends in, the, in, in our training community. Um, awesome trainers. Amazing students. Um you know, reached out to a bunch of them, got ideas and feedback. This is all the things that you kind of do in the professional design world yeah. as well in terms of market research and stuff. Uh, but it was really more for me to gut check myself because I didn't want it to just be like, oh, well, what do I want? Because that's, you know, it's not about me. Right. Uh, although this was very much a, a personal story of me. Like every year, what I would do, <laughs> and this is the this is the exact problem I would have. Every year, I'd be like, oh, I want to train with... Jaeger and the guys over at Tactical Response. I want to train with, uh, I want to take maybe a Haley class or a Modern Samurai or, um, you know, any other host of 20 plus trainers yeah. that I that I have on my dream list of like, well, maybe if I can make that class happen this year. So I would go to 20 different websites and find the classes that I want to take and I'd take those classes and i put them on my own personal calendar. And then if they lined up with shit that I'm right. doing, my teaching schedule, um, whatever i'd be like oh well maybe i can make that happen then i'd budget for it and do all this other stuff and then i realized i'm doing all this freaking work all of my friends are doing the same yes, exact thing all of them and like uh 
that that's the personal story, like the personal problem that this came from. And I didn't want to just try and solve it for me because maybe I'm an anomaly in in this whole thing. Right. But what I've found through talking to people and learning from everyone else is like, oh no, we were all doing the same thing. And anything that we can create to kind of create one central place where we're bringing that knowledge and bringing people to, uh, people have been responding really well to it. Yeah. Yeah, I know personally uh, the guys from Prepare Patriot have signed up. Um, Andrew from Combat Art Training has signed up. Um, Jay Gibson. Yeah. Prelectus. Yes. Brand um, new company. Brand new Just, company. You know. um, he, has, he has signed up. So these are all instructors that have registered with the website. And then you're able to find them through it. So how, tell them how that how it actually works. Like, like as a student, how would it work for me? So it's it's really simple. Um, you go to www.bulletin.com. And to spell bulletin, just take out the I. So B-U-L-L-E-T. Uh, oh, wow. Did I just say dot .com? You did. Uh, oh, man. That's terrible. I should really not do that. Um, bulletin.net. Um, so <laughs> B-U-L-L-E-T-N dot net. Um, and you're, you'll have a homepage and there's a, there's an entry window there and all you got to do is enter your, uh, your, your zip code, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, type it in. So I, I live in, uh, in Allentown area, type in my, my thing. And then you'll, as soon as you hit enter, it brings you to a page that's showing all of the events, I believe within a hundred miles of your location. And I think you can set that parameter as well. And you can. Yeah. yeah. So it, the default is like a hundred miles. Right. Um, and we can, you know, sometimes we switch that depending on. Uh, how many classes we have in the system, but um, basically it gives you a default distance for your location, lists everything, and then you can either back that distance down or bring it up to find more classes. You can select specific dates, so every every class that's or, or event that's listed on the website has a um, has a date range associated with it. So you can like say I only want to find classes in the month of October 2023. So. I'll just set that as my parameters, and it'll only show me those classes. Right. Um, you can search by topic. So we have topic tags. So um, if you're looking specifically for a pistol class, it'll have a pistol tag on it. Or if it's a CCW permit class. So the, the trainers have the ability to uh, tag a class with three different tags. Right. And, um, so, they, that, so that you can find it easily by looking for topic. Like a, it's basically a shortcut. Yeah, and like... There's a bunch of the price is on there as well. Uh, the length of the class. Say you only want to find a two day class instead of a five day class, or maybe you could only do a one day class, whatever it is. All of those things that like we found and I kind of talked to a bunch of other students, they're like, these are the reasons I, or these are the things I look for that help kind of allow me to make the decision on right. classes. You have those features in your search parameters. So right. you can customize the whole search just for what you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, I again, like, I, I've been through the same thing. Like, I love the guys' attack response. The website's a mess. Um, <laughs> trying I've had to, that conversation with James like, a few times. Trying to, trying to find the dates and the areas using the calendar is like pulling teeth. Um, so the idea that you, you, no matter what the website setup is for the trainer, you have the ability to kind of circumvent that. Um, to a user interface that's very easy to use. Now, I've registered myself on the website, um, and also trainers can register, obviously. Well, yeah, I mean, that's right. kind of... It, it's a very symbiotic relationship. Um, and that was the kind of hard thing for me to figure out exactly how to, like, get people associated with the website right. or familiar with it, because why would trainers want to come to it if there were no students? Right. And then why would students want to come to it if there were no trainers? So it it's very much kind of like finding... You know, or, or enticing everyone to it at mm -hmm. once. Hence, why it's free. I did. I did want to mention that free for everyone to use it, um, and that'll always be free. That's okay. my goal as a company um, to make sure that that core function of hey, a trainer who's out there just getting on their feet that you know wants to teach, they don't have to get hit with this big cost of you know figuring out how to do a website and do all these right. other things. Um, they can list the class and get. You know, just get going right away. Um, and the same thing for students. Like, if I created a barrier of entry for students, I'd be going against my own mission statement right. of, like, I want to get people to the training that they need. If I if I put a barrier there, it's not going to work. What, what my plan is to offer other things in the future of ways to help you, um, and those will be, like, premium memberships and right. ways to help trainers kind of promote their businesses. But it was very much a, uh, a, a two-pronged, 
approach of I need to I need to make this platform both usable for trainers and students without any barriers. And I guess so as a trainer um, going into it, you know, basically, obviously, their 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 uh, not motivation is the wrong word, but the reason why they would want to is simply because they get access to a pool of students that are searching for training. But but again, I'm assuming like the way they sign up is similar to the same way you would as a student. They register on the website. Yes. So um, when you get to the website, there's uh, there's a the button at the top that says register, um, and you're you're presented with two options. There's a trainer option and a student option. Mm -hmm. The student options very kind of basic. It, it for right now it's almost a placeholder. We're gonna add some more features in there. It's very easy. Yeah, and it's literally put in your email address and and choose a password. Uh, and you don't really have to put any more information in there than that. On the trainer side, it's a bit more advanced mm -hmm. um, or a, a bit more involved. Which it should be. Yeah, it, it should be. Um, there are some stipulations that we ask for from trainers, uh, some rules. There's a trainer agreement that we ask them to uh, agree to, um, you know, before they start posting classes. And that really consists of uh, a verification process. Right. Um, because... I would not feel comfortable having a platform out there where I'm just letting anybody all willy-nilly. Yeah, Joe Smith that yeah. happened to get his NRA training last week, and he wants to start making some money teaching people you know, how to shoot and yeah. maybe has a slightly exaggerated opinion of who he is or his qualifications. Could be, and that's not me putting Joe Smith no. down. If he's a good teacher, I want him on the platform. Right. Um, this is more as the... like. A, it's a, it's a defense against the kind of weird shit that happens out there with, like, bots and, yeah. and crazy things. Like, I'm going to... I personally verify every trainer that comes to the website. I, we have a phone call. I, I've met some amazing people over the last three weeks. Like, suit... Like, I, uh, trainers that I am so excited to go train with because I've just had a phone call with them and they're the nicest... Uh, you know, most amazing people I've talked it's to. It's almost as if you may have had an interest in creating the website because now he gets hooked up with trainers that otherwise he wouldn't have gotten hooked up with. Listen, no, this is I'm, a little secret, guys. I'm not saying it's a conspiracy, but it's this was all just a giant. Scare. <laughs> this is just so uh, one of the one of the stipulations too on the website, um, which we're very open about, and we 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 ask trainers to agree to when they when they come on is that. Um, for 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 them to post on the website, uh, we ask that they allow one Bulletin staff member, or a representative of Bulletin, to come to one class per year. Um, and that's not even necessarily to be like, oh well, that's getting us our money's worth. It's, no, it's it's uh, any trainer that's going to be worth their salt yes. is is going to be willing to have. They're going to jump yeah. all over that. Yeah, show. like in a, in essence, what I'm do, what I'm trying to do is create a myself and a pool. A very trusted, I'll call them professional students right. that that are willing to go to classes and not just uh, come to evaluate the class and make sure things are on the up and up. That's really not what it. But it's it's to be there in person to to kind of pull students and trainers together. Um, and then personally, what I'd love to do every time that I go to a class is I bring my camera, uh, I take videos for people, make posts about it. Um, I, you know, it's really to take that opportunity to help raise those trainers up right. and to, and to kind of profile them, uh, about the classes that they're doing and the ones that we're participating in. Um, and you know, it's, it's this kind of great, you know, symbiotic relationship where it's like, Hey, we're, we're, we're super excited to help you guys kind of get more students in the classes and to get your training to the people that need it. Yeah. Um, but it also helps us because then we get to connect with you guys right. and get in front of more students. And the reality is like, like. If you've no, if you have no experience or you don't have any first hand knowledge from either students that you trust their opinion on or at least you know to give you good feedback on the class, I mean, how else are you really going to know what you're sending people into that are trusting you to be giving them good information? Right, and that's a huge responsibility. Like there is a huge amount of weight and responsibility behind that because the reality is is that there are people that that go to classes because they want to shoot. And they're never going to carry a gun in their life. There are people that think that the gun is some kind of token that's going to ward off bad juju. Mm. Um, and then there are people that realize that that's not the case. Um, and you're sending them somewhere where they're going to learn how to defend themselves in the worst possible time in their life. So that that's a huge weight 
Yes. Um, and if you weren't doing everything you're doing to vet the people, to make sure that, you know, they're not necessarily meeting standards, but that, that they're at least going to be someone that you can trust to send people that you know to. Right. Well, and, and also uh, part of the verification process is I get to learn more about these trainers. Right. Um, and I, I take it, I mean, to your point, it, it's very humbling to me to, to kind of starting now to be recognized as somebody who is a trusted source and how to like, hey, man, you know, I, I think I know what class would be great for you. Go check out Jerry Nuss over here at Ascending Variable. Or you know what? What would work great for you is you should take Fighting Pistol from Tactical Response. Right. Or like a any one of the number of right. things that I've been exposed to at this point that's like, this is the best class for what you're looking for because we're all, you know, yeah. on our own separate paths. And that may not be the same for every person. Right. But um, I'm, I'm very honored to kind of be in this role of like knowing a lot of trainers, helping them connect, um, and also just being a bit of a guide for students as, along the way. Like, that's super important, and I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't have people doing that for me. Right. I mean, we, we've all been, like, I said it before on the channel many times, you know, um, I, had an, I had an incident which basically started me, like, my dad had guns when I was a kid, mm -hmm. shot a lot of stuff. My dad never carried his gun ever, ever. Um, so my idea was, oh, have a gun in the house, whatever. And then I had an incident where I could see the police station from where I was standing. And it took him 20 minutes to respond. And the hole that I left in my gut of any feeling of security just evaporated instantly. Um, and along with a bunch of other things kind of started me, okay, I need to find a way to defend my family, defend myself, protect the people that I love. Um, and that kind of started me down my whole path. Um, like I focused a lot on medical because I had an interest to begin with, but I had a guy call me out. You know, I did the EDC post, mm -hmm. you know, you lay your EDC out on the bed, you take the picture. Oh like, yeah. How yeah. cool am I? Oh man. And I've done that post so yeah, many times. Like you know, we nice all have square. We, oh, got to make sure it's straight. The yeah. You gotta, gotta right. yeah. Logo's yeah. gotta be in the yeah. right yeah. way. You gotta move the underwear off the bed. But, but a guy, instead of calling me out in public, he DM me and he said, where's your medical? And then he said something to me, to this day chills, like the back of my neck. He said, you just got into a shooting. You did the John Wick thing. You smoked that fool. But your wife is on the ground bleeding out. What do you do? And that was like, fuck. <laughs> and that, that kind of turned everything a little bit all across the board. And maybe a little too far. Um, but it turned it very serious. You know, so e everyone's got our thing that sets us down the path. Yeah. And if you could be the person that sends that person to the right, starts them the right way down a path, instead of sending them to some tattooed egomaniac who wants to show how good he shoots, mm. that immediately turns them off of training, immediately turns them off of getting better. And that's, that's huge. Right. Yeah, I, um, so I love teaching. I, like, I really enjoy it. It's something that I've kind of grown into from being a student. Um, but I also recognize... I'm not the best at, like, I, I still got many years of time that I need to put in to be good at doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, but man, do I know some fucking awesome trainers yeah. that like, okay, maybe if there's something that I know a little bit different or like can, can help fill a gap in the industry, I would, I, it'd be my joy to teach it. But man, it is so much more, you know, awesome to be in a role where I can be like, Hey, um, you should go check out Jay Gibson. Like he is yeah. like the best trainer I have ever seen. Yeah. Um, he's he, like, he can teach you things with a grunt. I don't understand <laughs> it. He's the reason I got into teaching. Uh, actually two, two guys, him and Gary Marr are, are the two guys that, that really inspired me to teach. Right. Um, uh, Jay, like a little, little backstory. Um, so I remember in a, in a fighting pistol class one day, um, it was probably like my third or fourth time being a student in the class, or I, I may have just been there as a hang around. I'm not even sure at this point. Um, and there was this moment in the class where um, Jay, uh, they needed somebody else to run a station. Yeah. I think it was like, you know, an L drill or something. And uh, Jay goes, oh, Mike's here. He can help run it. Like to one of the other, yeah. other instructors. And, I, and that, in that moment, I went, Holy shit. Uh Jay Jay mm -hmm. thinks I'm 
I can I can help. And I know, like, looking at it now, I know that's just a very, like, yeah. it's a small, but having his confidence, yeah. you know, like, oh, Mike's, Mike knows his shit, and he seems to be on top of being able to, like, help people, and, uh, like, that w- that's what put me on the teaching path. Right. I, that day, I realized, oh, I, I maybe I can help and right. help students, and, um, and then to, to continue that, Gary was the one that gave me my shot in, um, it, it give me an opportunity to teach. Like he's like, mm-hmm. oh, you you want to teach radio stuff? Yeah, man. I I I think somebody should. He's like, yeah, somebody needs to teach it, <laughs> and it's you. Yeah. And uh, how however you need to do that. <laughs> I'm like, well, um, I I don't I don't know. Like, what do I got to do? Do I start my own company? He's like. Well, you could do that, or I'll host you, or I'll, I'll you could teach for for Tremis, and I'm like, oh well, that that's that sounds like a huge yeah. honor. Like, so you know, I, he gave me the opportunity to teach under his banner, if you yeah. will, and I'm like, man, the, like those two guys, trainers within the industry, gave me the opportunity to pursue this thing that I love. Right. So like all of these people uh, have been in these roles that have helped me, and. Um, I just, I just hope to do that for everyone else. Yeah. And I was actually in hit, hit one of his radio classes um, because I was realizing it was a huge gap and I don't speak that language. Um, and it was very much, can, can I like hand you my shit? And, and can you please just fi- just do this? No. Um, and he was like, no. <laughs> no. Um, he said, but he said, I've been thinking about X, Y, Z. I was like, dude, like when, where, let me know. Um and that was a great class. Oh, thank that you. That was an yeah. awesome class. Especially especially the hunt and seek part of it, which is just fucking fantastic. Yeah, I, I was really proud of that. And um, it's funny, too, because, like, I, I, I keep name-dropping other trainers out there. Uh, Evan over at Radio Made Easy, I just uh, he just signed up on Bulletin a couple weeks ago as well. And he does... From I haven't been able to take one of his classes yet, but we both came from the same kind of place yeah. where it's like, hey, no one's teaching this radio stuff. Someone needs to teach it. So, like, his class is one that I really want to be in. Yeah. I'm really proud of the class that we did. The fact that there's trainers out there kind of spontaneous or people just spontaneously learning the craft of, like, I need to learn how to pick up these radios, um, but also then sharing that with, that, yeah. with other people, I think that's just awesome. Because you can be the most John, John Wicky shoot or whatever. Oh, yeah. If you Kung don't, fu. If, if you don't have comms, you're dead. Like, the reality is, it may take longer, but you're still going to be dead. You know what actually you need before comms? Friends. Yes, friends help. Yeah, if you're an asshole, I mean, you don't need comms. But most well, luckily, if you're an asshole, don't get comms. Yeah, no, don't worry. Yeah. About it. Let 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 fate work itself out, and and that'll solve that problem in the gene pool. But if you're not an <laughs> asshole, um, I'm actually going to get a chance um, in October. I have to go down to prepare Patriot to do their force and force. I role play for them. Mm. If you haven't checked them out, check them the fuck out. You can find them on Bulletin. Um, uh, but I'm dot gonna, net dot net dot net. <laughs> But I'm going to get a chance to hitch a ride with Evan down to Georgia. Okay. Where he's doing his radio class. Which nice. Is hero to zero. Yeah. Um, zero to hero. Zero to hero. Thank yeah. you. Which you can hero find, to zero would be a terrible which class. Which you can find on Bulletin. Yes. Um, and I'm going to get a chance to take that that class. And I'm really, really looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. I'm, I'm so honored um, and flattered that like, I, so, so far I think we have 21 trainers from around the country. That's all. Awesome. Um, a bunch of them in Tennessee actually. So all, for all you Tennessee motherfuckers out there. Yeah, fuck you by yeah, the way. Yeah, like you have so much good training yeah, by you, you. It's not fair. Um, but also I'm jealous. Um, but like. But still fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> we've got, we've got trainers out in Washington, Texas. Like, li- I think. I'd be hard pressed to say that there isn't a point on the continental U.S. where if you expand the search parameters yeah. out to its greatest, I think it's 500 uh, miles is its biggest thing. I think anywhere in the continental U.S. you will get a result. Yeah, uh, I know 500 miles is a lot, but it, that that to me, like being three weeks into this, is yep. like holy cow! This I think people are seeing some value in it. Um, and let's face it, there's areas that there's like a desert of it. Yeah, like especially like if you live in Vermont. New Hampshire, Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Like I know, three R training is up that way. Yeah, three R. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there there are areas where it absolutely is a desert. There's a reason why P 
people will drive 14 hours to go to Camden or to go to where they are in Anvil or Palmyra mm -hmm. or come to Tremis. Like, there's a reason for that is because it can be tough. Yeah. Um, and also, the reality is, like, you don't know what you're getting into and popping six to seven hundred bucks and whatever the ammo cost is to come out of it with maybe you're not you're always gonna learn something but come out of it with with not what you were expecting right and that's tough so that's where this comes in that's just yeah. a fantastic tool well the air like having areas is good and like you can start figuring out where there's hot spots of of training right. um but I think the re like to me the true value of this as well is the training or the travel training aspect because right. I one of the things and this is just giving a little hint to everybody there will be coming soon hopefully within this year the feature of like doing a safe search so you can get a notification when Ooh. when something comes in in a certain area Even before it's sold out yes exactly so like you can get a boom hey there is a shotgun class. Uh, Within this date range, yeah. within 25 miles of you, um, you know, you, you can set the, like, right. doing an ammo search type of thing. So that's one of the priorities that we have for, for adding a feature in. Um, but I think that would be so helpful for the trainers that go all the way around the country. So, like, there's there's trainers on my list. Uh, like Haley, Pat Mac, um, uh, NC Scout down at Brush Beater. Like, th these are guys I'm like, they're on my dream train. Yeah. Or Craig Douglas at Shivworks. Oh, guys that yes. I haven't gotten to train with yet. Um, and they travel. They don't always right. hold it in their in their home state. And sometimes they'll they'll throw in uh, oh um, Scott Jedlinski. He does uh, he does Modern Samurai, yeah, right. amazing Red Dot class. Haven't gotten to t take it yet, but I know some people that have. Um, he trains all around the country. He yeah. was just in Scranton a couple weeks ago. I had no idea when the class yeah. was posted, or else. Like, if I had a, something to tell me, like, boom, something just popped up in Scranton that was an hour away, I would have signed up instantly. But, but the other thing is, like, like if you've been to Tag Response, you know that you can have a fighting pistol class that could be 40 people. Like, they have the capacity to, to kind of take that in. But a lot of these trainers, it's just them. Yeah. So, at a dozen, it gets cut off. So, Even a dozen's a lot you know, right, for a single right. trainer. So, so, the option and the ability to get... A notification for these classes before they are fucking sold out is huge. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to pay a little bit of money and get preferential notification. Well, that's yeah. Is you know, I mean, that's I know for me that's something I'd be worth willing to pay for. That, that's and that's so. where where hopefully the company becomes a company because right. very much until this point it has been a passion project and uh, there's no actual revenue stream so it's it? just been just you me myself and i basically. really it's just me uh, my wife helps as well she's also a, uh, a creative director in the um in the advert or the uh the graph design world Got it. um you know uh, our development team um has been uh, they have moved mountains for us um but for me it was very much one of these things like i don't care about like it's just a horrible way to run a company <laughs> um, I don't care about any of that stuff. To me, I would not, it wouldn't, if I didn't have the trust and seeing people have value in it, um, and kind of grow from the grassroots and like offer something that people can trust, I, I wouldn't want to do it. Right. Like, like that's, that, that was me kind of going like, all right, well, if it's, if it turns into nothing more than just a tool that ever, like I can help the training industry with and get students into classes uh i that's success right yeah like uh, so i hopefully i can be a better businessman uh, in the <laughs> as we go down the line but um uh, you know to me the priority number one was offer something for trainers and students to get together and that speaks volumes because the reality is there are many people um that all they care about is filling seats and getting in dollars and there's not necessarily a care past that so that's that's fucking huge yeah well, you know, um, not to get all sappy on you, uh -oh. um, you know, <laughs> get your like, tissues ready. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it, it is a, it's, it's a tough subject for me. Cause like I learned, uh, from James Jaeger, yep. uh, um, how if you don't know who that is by James, go fuck yourself. I know. It's like, um, <laughs> he, uh, he taught me something that will never leave me. Uh, and that is the, that generosity yeah. is like. 
that first and foremost, you need to be a generous person. You need to freely give uh, to truly understand who yep. we are as a culture. Um, and that was a huge gift from him. Like to me, understanding like, hey, um, you need to take that approach. Yeah. And, and and there's a difference between being told that and then witnessing it. Yeah. Because anyone that was at any point in time around that man during, say, a span of three to four days, I defy you to logically try and figure out how the fuck he had time to do all the things that he would do mm. in that time period. Like, yeah. he was... Every time I've been around him, he, he was completely selfless. And he gave of himself to anyone, and even to people that didn't necessarily want it to be given, that were reluctant to take it. Um, and that is absolutely, that was a huge impact on me. You know, the very first time I was in Camden. Yeah. Um, I had, you know, gone back and forth with the lives. I'd been a member of the live stream for a while. I was a moderator. Woohoo. Um, had a band hammer. Um, and I, I, I stayed in the team room. Um, and I said to him, Hey, you know, I'll be in town, whatever. So I got in kind of late, like nine o'clock, nine, nine thirty. Mm -hmm. I felt bad because I was the only one in the team room. I was the first one there. And I'm like creeping around. Yeah. Like, I don't want to wake anyone up. <laughs> James comes downstairs and he said, what the fuck didn't you let me know you were here? It's like, okay. Um, I didn't know I was supposed to. Yeah, right. And then the next day when I showed up to just do the lot, the, you know, the sign-in thing, he said, uh, so you want to shoot this pistol, right? And I said, yeah, because I mentioned it in a live stream. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, well, let's go. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I <laughs> jump in the truck with James um, we drive down to the range, uh, he starts setting up targets, and I got out of the truck, started helping him, and he said something, like, kind of, kind of, kind of like, okay, you know, and then got a 45-minute private class, basically, <laughs> with James, like, the first time ever in Camden. Yeah. And Fighting Pistol was the first class that I'd ever taken. So, until that point, I had not taken a class before. Um, and, like, that whole attitude like permeated everything about what he did yeah. and it absolutely paid it forward to everyone else. Yeah. Because if you're in that community in any way, shape or form, you couldn't help, but I think take that on. It oh, was yeah. infectious. Yeah. It, it, it truly is. I mean, it's sad to say that, you know, I've saw some people not yeah. take that with them and not absorb yeah. it. Um, but the good ones do, Yep. you know, the ones that, that like I've learned to, to like that I call my brothers after all these yep. years and, um, there's, there's a lot of people I've met through that whole world that, ugh, shit, man, I, uh, I wouldn't be half the person yeah. I am if it wasn't for, for knowing the, like, not just the instructors and not just James, but like the fellow students yeah. and people that I've, you know, had lifelong friendships now with, yeah. um, or, well, it hasn't been a lifetime yet, but I know it will be. Yeah. And I mean, and the reality is kind of being in a group kind of vetted you to the rest of the people. Because they were very good at rooting out the a-holes. Yeah. You know, um, and it, it it absolutely, like, I know there are people that live in Michigan, that live in North Carolina, live in Tennessee, live in Florida. Like, my bags are packed. Like, if they called me and said, hey, dude, like, I need you. Like, like I would, my bags are packed. You know, um, more than some family that I have. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what I mean? And and that that that's a gift. I mean, having that community and that group of people and finding people that think the same way you do, but at the same time aren't just going to be an echo chamber because that's sometimes as bad as it is good. It's true, yeah. Um, has been a huge gift. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, like I said, I was being sappy and like that, that inspired, like James really inspired this whole thing. Uh, in a way, um, I mean, he was the first trainer I ever trained with and tactical response was kind of like my foundation and all this other stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, really, you know, last year was rough, mm -hmm. like losing him. And, um, you know, it was about that same time where I, I realized like, you know, what we were talking about before is like, oh, well, I realized there was a problem that needed to be solved and that the dude that needed to solve that was me. Mm -hmm. And I, I came to the realization at the time that like if I can, if I can just do a fraction of the goodwill and the good deeds that Jaeger had done, yes, and he showed me how to do, um, that was something that 
you know, it was very important for me to just kind of like, oh, I, I just, I hope I can move the needle just yep. infinitesimally <laughs> as much as he did uh, with, with trying to bring everyone, like he, he gave me a home. Uh, he really did. Uh, the tactical response community has been uh, an amazing place that I've loved being a part of. And, um, you know, I, I've had the privilege of also being in that kind of position with other places as well. Other alumni groups that I've kind of expanded into. Right. And um, even so to my own students, right. like that is that is like very touching to have people that you've taught, that you keep in touch with, that, you know, you can start a community with. And then I realized, you know what, there needs to be something pulling those communities together to try and connect them. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I just hope that it, it kind of, you know, does that. I think it, I think it's it's a hole for sure that has not yet been filled. And I think, I mean, to a certain extent, yes, with, with, with individual alumni groups. Um, and definitely there's some cross-pollination with certain groups, like on Facebook, that have people from all the different groups kind of mingling together. Um, but it's not something that you see widely. I mean, mm -hmm. I think you're definitely filling a hole that, that's not been filled. I like filling holes. Yeah, filling holes is fun. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think it's awesome. I, I, when, when, you, when I first, I, when I, I, I thought he was making bullets. Like when I first saw it, because the symbol, if you don't, if you haven't seen it yet, there's secretly. Get it? It's a bullet. It's a bullet and an N. And an N. Bullet. Ten. Mm. Yeah. Maybe if you didn't figure that out, you should probably. Stop I was kind of going. I was kind of going for like a yeah. FedEx logo type right. of thing, where if you don't realize there's an arrow in it, exactly. and then, then when you see it, it's like. You mean for like Amazon from A to yeah. Z, like that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. But but I thought he was making ammo. Like when I first saw it, I was like, oh, he's making ammo because I saw the mini ball thing. I was like, oh, okay, he's making making ammo, and I was like, hey, what's up with this thing? And then he said what it was. I was like, that's fucking brilliant. Mm. So yeah. So guys. So. I'm going to pause the video okay. because we're going to switch gears a little bit um, now that you know who Mike is. Um, I'm, I have a couple questions I'm going to ask him, okay. and I also want to make sure this stupid thing is still recording because if I've lost any oh, of this, man, that I'm going to snap the phone in half. <laughs> um, so we're going to pause this, and we're going to come right back because I have I have a question that's probably going to bleed on, and maybe we'll do a two-parter depending how long the total interview is. Um, so we're going to pause this here, and then we'll either be right back or you'll see the next part in about a week. One or the other, it'll be a surprise. All right, so coming right back at you.